let's dive a little deeper into OSPF and talk about multi-area OSPF. So we did a configuration of single area OSPF and made a simple network. Uh, so I mentioned with multi-area you can make your network more efficient if it's a larger size it makes it more scalable if you were to do multi-area. So we're going to take talk a little bit about multi-area features and functionality and then we'll go ahead and, and do a configuration later. So those previous examples were single area. This is multi-area. Multi-area helps uh, reduce that processing, the memory overhead. Remember I mentioned with the uh, SPF algorithm would have to run whenever something uh, changes or potentially run if something changes. Uh, so this reduces that amount of processing. It reduces the traffic. How many updates are being sent back and forth? Remember those advertisements that are being sent back and forth? Uh, it's going to reduce the amount of that. Uh, it'll also reduce the uh, routing table size. So on the routers themselves, their routing tables will be smaller, so processing of traffic uh, theoretically would be faster because there'll be less routes to check. In a multi-area, you're going to have two areas, uh, at least. Uh, you're going to have a backbone, and you're going to have a regular. So the backbone, I know I mentioned that at one point, was uh, usually area zero. <laughs> area zero. So in a single area, that's your backbone and your regular network, it's all in one. When we start talking multi-area, there's a good chance you'll have some sort of data center type backbone area of your network where it's going to be doing uh, high-speed transit and you'll have specialized routers designed to simply get IP packets from one area to another and that'll traverse that area zero. So that'll be our high-speed transit backbone area. Uh, we have a regular type of area which was, would, would be your non-backbone area and you can have multiples of those. That'll be for those end users or different buildings or things like that. Uh, and that would be, for example, area, you know, one and up. So if we were to draw a little network, it could look something like this. So we'll have some routers over here, and then we'll have some routers here, and then we'll have a couple routers over here. and it might look something like that. So over here could be an area and over here could be an area and then this would be our backbone. So this could be area 0 and then this might be area 1 and area 2. So that's that's the idea there. So we have these larger areas for end users and uh, end devices and then you'll have this core center that's going to worry about transferring data as fast as possible from one area to another. You could potentially have just two areas next to each other, but if you want to get into scalability, it would look something like this. So in this uh, design, we have a couple different router types. And let me add one more little connection here. really tiny little internet cloud there. Uh, so 
we have some different types of, of routers. Um, we have an internal router, so all the interfaces are in the same area. So for example, this would be an internal router. A lot of these over here. Uh, we have backbone routers, so that would be these guys. Backbone 1, 2, and 3, technically. Uh, we have an area border router, which connects multiple areas. So area border router would be, for example, this one because it would be if I I'm, I should have overlapped these two colors here where they would the circles overlap they would overlap on this for example um, or also this one since that potentially could be it uh, it depends on how you wanted to design it this also over here would be a border router so and those are of course we have another acronym so those would be ABR area border router. Uh, there's also uh, system boundary routers and those, guess what, another acronym, <laughs> ASBR. So it's Autonomous System Boundary Router. So our uh, multiple areas comprise one autonomous system uh, which, remember when I mentioned briefly some BGP, you have your entire organization would be an autonomous system essentially. Uh, so this would be the border router from your autonomous system to the rest of the world or some other wide area network link of some kind. Uh, so it connects to external networks and that would be this one here in the middle because it connects to the internet. So that would be your ASBR. And then these would be potentially ABRs. And then that's your core, uh, your backbone core router. And then we have uh, the regular internal. There's a number of updates. Uh, this link state advertisements that we mentioned before. And whenever something changes and then whenever there's a link that needs to be explained to everyone else in the network, it's going to send out that link state advertisement uh, to update everyone about that information. And there's a number of different types of link state advertisements. For a multi-area OSPF, the first five are required. There's 11 types total, so there's a lot of flexibility built into OSPF. Uh, but the only the first five do we really care about to for the, for the bare minimum to make multi-area work.